Let's take a look at what's new in Flutterflow for May 2023. First off, we made some big updates to data types in Flutterflow. Number one, data types are no longer tied to Firestore, so you can create them without having to set up Firebase. You can access it from the left panel and set up your schema for your variable similar to collections. So now you can use data types in your app state variables for access across your application. You can use them in page state variables to generate children directly from your data type if it's a list. And you can use it in component state variables without having to query a collection. And lastly, it's also much easier now to create and use data types in custom code and API variables. These updates give you much more flexibility and allow to use custom data types whether or not you use Firestore. Next up is custom dialog actions. Create beautiful custom drop-down menus with the new aligned dialog option. Let's use it to build this drop-down. First, I'll navigate to the container that holds the account button. Then, I'll navigate to the actions panel. I'll set this to on tap and look for custom dialog action. Once I'm presented with the properties, I can select my pre-built custom component as a dialog. Now we can go ahead and toggle on align with target widget, set up our dialog alignment and target alignment, select avoid overflow, and that's all it takes. Number three, we have updates to paste style. You can now effortlessly paste styling, such as padding, border color, background color, from one widget to another. This will allow you to create consistent aesthetics across widgets in seconds. Let's add in a button here. All we have to do is right click, select copy widget style, right click again, and paste the widget styling to the other button. Simple as that. Moving on, we have custom breakpoints. Custom breakpoints allow you to establish a more finely tuned responsive layout by letting you define what pixel width your responsive triggers target. Here we have a 479 pixel width from mobile to tablet view. I have the sidebar set to appear conditionally on a tablet view. Now, as I expand to 479 pixels, it appears. So now, let's go back. If I change this to 500 pixel width, instead, the sidebar appears on the tablet view after 500 pixels. As a result, you're now empowered to decide when your UI elements go to mobile, tablet, and desktop view. One of our favorite new features is part of our AI Gen release. In the theme settings and in the colors tab, go ahead and select Generate with AI, and welcome to Theme Gen, our first AI feature publicly available. Now you can describe the kind of color theme that you'd like. Let's go with Penguin's Beach Vacation. And sweet, we're presented with a great list of colors with a penguin who might be spending some time in Miami. And now we can toggle dark and light mode on the same panel and also explore other color and text themes that may fit our application. And then when we go ahead and hit save changes, the colors are added into our design system automatically. And you can see that our app takes on a penguin's version of a beach vacation. Be sure to use this and share your favorite themes with us on social media. Next up, we have Firestore Batch Writes. Batch Writes allow you to group several write operations into a single atomic operation. When creating backend calls, simply toggle on Batch Writes to ensure all your data updates either completely succeed or completely fail, preventing any partial updates. Next, we have two new features for faster building. First off is Widget Tree Search. Locating specific widgets is as simple as typing in the name now. No more endless scrolling or hunting through long widget trees to find that one container you've been looking for. And tip number two is to hold to see the widget tree. Once you've selected your preferred widget from the widget panel, simply click and hold to see the widget tree. From there, you can drag the widget anywhere on the widget tree for easy building. Next, you now have access to use reusable action blocks. Action blocks allow you to create a sequence of actions that can be reused throughout your entire app. You can use app-wide action blocks or page-wide action blocks depending on your use case. When you have long action chains that you reuse, you may forget to update them across all similar action chains, which leads to bugs. With action blocks, if you need to make changes, just update the main action block. Action blocks also support parameters and you can specify a return value as well. This means less repetition, less room for errors, and more time to focus on building. Next up, we have a new tooltip widget. Tooltips are small contextual messages that appear when a user hovers over or taps an element. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this button in a tooltip widget. You can also find tooltips within the widget panel. Tooltips are great because they provide additional information for the user, making them helpful in offering guidance or clarifying functionality. Our new tooltip widget provides a range of customization options, such as colors, fonts, and display direction. This allows you to create a unique and personalized experience for your end user. 
Our new conditional builder widget is now live. This widget will save you time and allow you to conditionally display widgets within your mobile and web applications. You can now effortlessly switch between different UI elements based on conditions, all within a few clicks. Here, for example, I'm adding in the conditional widget into a list view. Now, I'm going to set it so that if an iOS device is displayed, then the iOS component will be showcased for this travel app. Else, the Android component will be showcased for the travel app. You can add in more else statements into this widget, and you can select which one is displayed on the UI builder. Lastly, a new update we have is project labels. You can now add labels to your project and keep your project dashboard organized. This is especially helpful if you have clients or different types of projects. Here I have labels for AI and my favorite client. Labels can also be used for your entire team. You can just toggle this on when creating a label, and this makes it easy to categorize and filter all your various projects across your team. And lastly, we have download code for snapshot or versions. Now when peeking a snapshot or a version, you can download the code of that version or snapshot. This is especially helpful when multiple users are working on the same project. One user can export and test a known stable version, while others continue development, potentially introducing breaking changes. And finally, our Choice Chips widget just got a big upgrade. You can now add border radius, weight, color, and padding to your Choice Chips. These new options will give you even more control to create an app that's not just functional, but also beautiful. That's it for May's product updates. Share your favorite features in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one.